Hi guys, I'm Ailish. I am a physics student at Durham Uni and uh, today's experiment we're gonna use chocolate to explore how we know what the speed of light is. So you probably all know that it takes about eight minutes for the light to get from the sun to earth but how do we know that? You've probably also all heard of Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared, and the C in this equation stands for the speed of light. But how do we know what the speed of light actually is? Well, the good news for us is we can find out quite easily using a microwave and the best bit, chocolate. So for this experiment, bits of equipment you'll need, you'll need a notepad to do some uh, writing down of your results, You'll need a pen, obviously, to write your results down. You'll need a ruler, um, like just a normal ruler, like this. Um, chocolate, so you can use chocolate buttons. Uh, they're quite good because they're quite thin. Uh, it can be any white chocolate, milk chocolate, dark chocolate, whatever you like. And uh, you need a tray. It needs to be, or a board or something, it needs to be microwavable. So not made of metal. You want something that's plastic. If you're in doubt, ask your mum or dad or parents or carers or anything um, about about what to use. Um, this experiment is pretty safe. You can do it in your own house, obviously, because uh, you're all at home. But um, you need to be careful. We're going to be melting chocolate in this experiment. So obviously when it comes out of the microwave, it's really hot. So don't go sticking your fingers in the melted chocolate straight away. And when you're putting stuff in the microwave, you probably all know this, but make sure you haven't got bits of metal and stuff in the microwave. Okay, so on to the fun part, the science part. Um, everything around us we see because of light. Um, you all know what light is. You've all got light bulbs. Uh, you've all, you know, the sun's outside. Uh, but light's actually a huge spectrum called electromagnetic waves. And these range from radio waves down at one end all the way up to gamma rays at the other end. So we have radio waves, um, then we have microwaves, we have infrared, visible light, ultraviolet light, x-rays and gamma rays. And this is our what we call our electromagnetic spectrum. So visible light is in the name really, it's what we use to see. Um, microwaves are slightly further down the spectrum and they are what we use in our microwave ovens to cook our food. So today, because it's easy for us to get access to lots of microwaves, we're going to be using them to calculate the speed of light. And the cool thing is, guys, all these different types of light all travel at the same speed, which is really useful for us. All right, so I don't know how much you guys already know from school, but I'm going to assume that you don't know much, just so that everyone's on the same level. And I'll talk a bit about what waves look like. So a wave, you've probably seen it before, but it's basically like this. So if you imagine waves at the seaside, if you were like a little kid drawing a picture, you might draw them like that. And that is basically what our light waves look like. Obviously, we can't see them because they're so small. But that is what our light waves look like. And one wave is the distance between, so we call these dips here troughs and these pointy bits here peaks. And the wave is a distance between one point on the wave and the next point on the wave that's exactly the same. So that's a bit complicated, but if you think here and here are exactly the same, we have one wave here and then if you look, it's going to go and repeat itself again. Here and here are also exactly the same. You've got a peak there and a peak there. And if you imagine another trough over here, this bit would be the same as that. So we call this here, between two identical bits on a wave, a wavelength. We also call the amount of waves passing a point per second the frequency of a wave. So if you imagine, if we add a little uh, counter here, every time we had one of those go past, we'd count. And then after a second, we count how many of these full waves have gone past in that second. 
and that's what we call our frequency. And then the really important equation that links the wavelength and the frequency and the speed of light together, and that's uh, the equation, the speed equals the frequency times the wavelength. You might have heard it called C equals F lambda, but it's essentially the speed is the frequency times the wavelength. And that is basically how our waves work. Now, in microwaves, we have waves all over the place. There's not just one wave that's emitted each time. They're firing loads and loads of waves all at once to try and heat up our food. So we get this thing called superposition. Now, superposition sounds complicated. It's not. It's basically we're just adding waves together. So if this is our wave number one. And we had another wave coming through like this from the microwave emitter. To get our final wave, we basically just add them together. So you can see here that they are exactly the same. They're moving in exactly the same phase. So if we were to draw what our final wave would look like, it would be twice the size of our individual waves because remember we're adding them together so it'd be twice as tall however they might not be moving like that so if we imagine we've got a wave coming like this we might also have a wave that starts off here and is going like this and you can see they are completely what we call out of phase. They're complete opposites of each other. And if you look at this, if we think of this as one, and this is minus one down here, one plus minus one is zero. So what we actually get here for our, what we call our resultant wave is a complete cancellation. So we have two different extremes. We have a double strength wave and we have a zero wave. And this means if we're cooking our food and we don't have a spinny disc in our microwave, we get things called hotspots. And hotspots are where the waves are adding together completely uh, to get twice as much power. And then we have bits that won't cook at all, which is where we're getting our zero waves. So like our shadows, if you imagine a shadow outside and then a bit through a, micro, um, a magnifying glass. This is our microwave through a magnifying glass and this is our microwave through a shadow. So you've got bits of no energy and bits of lots of energy. And um, I won't go into it, but we know from doing some maths that the difference between two areas of high energy microwave um, so two hotspots, the distance between the two is equal to the wavelength divided by two. And that's the key bit of information that we're going to use to calculate the speed of light. All right, guys. So before you start, you might want to make some notes. So I've done it on a pad here. Uh, at the top, I've written our key equation. Speed equals frequency times wavelength. And then I've got spaces to write the frequency, the wavelength divided by two, the wavelength, and then the final calculation for speed of light. Okay, so how can we find the frequency of our microwave? So you should have a sticker on it somewhere. So in my microwave, it's on the side here. So if I show you guys, um, it's... I don't know if you can see, it's just this sticker here. And the frequency is down here. It says 2450 megahertz. So a hertz is the unit of frequency. So you know how we measure distance in meters and time in seconds. Hertz is how we measure frequency. So for now, I know that the frequency of my microwave is 2450 megahertz. Okay. So just put this back down like that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a note of that in my notebook, 2450 megahertz. 
and that's all I need to make a note of for now. Okay, so the next bit is to uh, lay out the chocolate buttons. So you open the chocolate buttons. I'm using a plate, not the tray I showed you earlier. But a tray is fine, plate's fine, as long as it doesn't go in the microwave, as long as it's big. You want to make sure it's quite big because we need space to see what's happening. So you just want to lay them round, lay them on the plate. Um, about one layer thick. It doesn't matter too much. Um, but yeah, one layer thick is good. Chocolate buttons are uh, a good thing to do it with because they're quite thin. They melt quite easily, uh, which is good. You might need more than one packet um, to cover your whole tray or plate. Uh, the more you've got the better because um, you get a better definition um, for your hot spots. Um, hopefully it works first time. Obviously, you will probably know from school, physics experiments aren't the most reliable when we do them at home. They can go wrong very easily. But I've done this one before and it worked quite well. So, fingers crossed, this time it goes well again. Um, so yeah, just laying out the chocolate buttons here on the plate. I've got half cho uh, milk chocolate and half dark chocolate because I only had one packet of milk chocolate buttons in the house. So uh, we'll see how this goes. It's a bit weird, won't it? But there you go. Yeah, so you can see the difference in the colour. Um, it doesn't really matter. But uh, you just want to get a good covering so that you can measure your hot spots. Okie dokie. Right, then we're going to pop it in the microwave. Like that. So it's just sitting in the microwave. I'll show you. If you can, put it, you see on the side how there's like that little box, that's where the microwaves come from. So just try and don't put it right next to that if you've got space, just because otherwise the microwave can't help but hit it and it just kind of messes it up a little bit. But uh, that, that's looking good. So we'll close the microwave. You don't want to put it in for very long. So maybe medium heat for about 10 seconds. Um, if it, obviously if it hasn't melted, you can put it in for longer, but it's uh, you don't want to over melt it because eventually the microwave will bounce off the side and everything will end up getting hit if you put it in for ages and ages. So just a little bit. And uh, we'll see what's happening here. Okay, so fingers crossed, hoping that science does us a good one. Right, Ooh. so I'm not sure whether that's completely um, melted yet, so I'm just going to, nope, they've not melted yet, so I'm going to put it back in again, and that's alright, it's a bit of trial and error. So I'll stick that back in the microwave, and maybe put it on for, uh, put it on medium. Uh, so put it on medium for maybe 20 seconds this time and see what happens with that it's exciting feels warmer oh that's definitely starting to melt there so I'm probably gonna put it in for a little bit longer you can see these ones here they've gone really smooth oh and that one's definitely melting over there so it looks like oh and that looks a bit melty as well so not sure at the minute but it looks like we've got a bit of a hot spot forming over here and a hot spot forming over here so if you can kind of see that we've got a melty one over here and these ones look like they're starting to get a bit melty as well so i'm going to put it back in um for maybe another 20 seconds on medium or maybe i'll do 15 so i'll pause it after 15 seconds 
and yeah it's just about that gradual you don't want to overheat them straight away do it too fast you'll just get a plate full of melted chocolate which isn't a bad thing but for science yeah that's a bit of a bad thing um, um so you can definitely see that i get pen here you can definitely see this is definitely melted here you can also see here it's definitely starting to melt so we've kind of got here is our hot spot and here is our hot spot so what we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler and measure the distance between the two and that's roughly about eight centimeters here so what we're going to do if we have our little notebook and remember what i said the difference between the two is equal to the wavelength divided by two so we're going to write down um how much did i say eight centimeters um which to get our wavelength we want to times that by two so we have 16 centimeters here now to do our calculation we want our um units to be um normal we don't want mega and we don't want center in them so mega means that it's this number times 10 to the 6 so it's standard form if you've done that at school so what we're going to write is 2450 times 10 to the 6 hertz and that's our frequency and then down here to get it in meters what we want to do we just want to divide it by 10 so 16 centimeters is 0.16 meters and all that's left to do is plug it into our calculator so i've got my calculator here and uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to type it in so we want frequency times wavelength so our frequency is 2450 times 10 to the 6 and our wavelength was 0.16 meters so this is our calculation and we'll click equals and see what it gives us for the speed of light so our value here is 3.9 times 10 to the 8 we'll write that down in our notebook uh, 3.9 times 10 to the 8 and the units that we use for speed is meters per second okay so normally if you're in the car you've got kilometers per hour miles per hour uh, in science we like to use meters per second it's just what lots of scientists if you went to cern that's what the scientists there might use if you went over to nasa they might be using that as well um so meters per second is a good old unit for us in science so this is our value 3.9 times 10 to the 8 meters per second and for those of you that want to know how close we got all the scientists around the world the value that they agree on for the speed of light is oh get my pen to work three times ten to the eight meters per second so we're not quite there but we're not far off at all we're in the correct order um it's the correct size number um which is what we like and um yeah so that's all good and that's our value for the speed of light so then we can use things like that to calculate things like how far is it to the sun if we know the speed of light and how long it might take to get to us we can use it to calculate how far away a thunderstorm is we need to know the speed of sound obviously but we now know the speed of light we're halfway there we can use it for all sorts of things um it's used when uh, uh doctors take x-rays you need to figure out how fast the light's moving uh, in order to make the image obviously computers do all the maths for us which is nice but this little number is used in so many different things and of course uh, this little number here is called c and it's used in the einstein equals mc squared so that is how we use chocolate and a microwave to find out the speed of light Alrighty guys, so in our last experiment we calculated the speed of light uh, using a chocolate and the microwave and we got a pretty good value, pretty close to the accepted value. 
uh, with the accepted value being 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And uh, the speed of light is accepted by the scientific community as a universal constant, which means everywhere across the universe, the speed of light is always the same. And Einstein proved actually that the speed of light is the universal speed limit. That is nothing goes faster than the speed of light. So we know that all different forms of electromagnetic radiation, which is the posh name for light, travel at three times 10 to the eight meters per second. But if you remember when we were doing the last experiment, there were two other factors that came in to our calculations. So we had our equation, speed of light equals the frequency times the wavelength. So if the speed of light is a constant, for the different types of waves, the thing that changes is the frequency of the wave and the wavelength of the wave. So you, see, you can see at the top here, I've uh, written out from radio waves on the left here, all the way up to gamma rays on the right over here. And underneath, you can see I've drawn like a really dodgy uh, diagram of a wave. And on the left here, near the uh, radio waves, the waves are really spread out and they get much much more bunched up together as you go towards the gamma rays. And that's because at the radio end of the electromagnetic spectrum, waves have a really large wavelength. And at the gamma ray end of the electromagnetic spectrum, they have a really short wavelength. And well, we know from our last experiment that speed of light equals frequency times wavelength. We also know that speed of light stays the same for all these different types of waves. So if the wavelength is changing, in order for speed of light to stay the same, frequency must also be changing. So what we can actually say is at this end of the spectrum, waves have a really large wavelength and low frequency. And at this end of the spectrum, waves have a really short wavelength, but a really high frequency. And uh, here, what I've done basically is just zoomed into this bit of the uh, spectrum, the infrared visible and UV part of the spectrum. And you can see we have with large wavelengths and low frequency, we have the infrared waves. And as the wavelength decreases and the frequency increases, we go through our visible light spectrum. And this is basically our rainbow from red all the way up to violet. And then as the wavelength gets even smaller, we then go into ultraviolet. And, you know, you have animals that can see infrared and ultraviolet. Unfortunately, as humans, we can't. We've only got this spectrum. Um, so this is our visible light. And in this experiment, what we're going to do is we're going to make an ex uh, a telescope uh, so that we can actually see this spectrum here. And it works basically by all these different colours of light are made up of waves of different wavelengths. And they... Uh, interact differently with the telescope which causes the light to split up so you can see all the individual colors all right for this experiment uh, here are a few of the things you're going to need first of all the main bit you're going to need an empty pringles tube like this uh, it's, it's quite important that it's a pringles tube because you need like the silver bit in the middle so i don't think like stackers and whatnot from moldy and whatnot have the uh the silver bit in the inside so yeah pringles pringles tube that's good obviously eat the pringles first we don't want it full uh also gonna need a knife like quite a sharp one um some scissors um some tape so parcel tape duct tape sellotape uh i've got some sellotape and some parcel tape i've lost my duct tape unfortunately chopping board um to do your chopping on and also like an old CD that you can cut up and stuff like don't choose your favourite CD or your mum and dad's favourite CD or your granddad's favourite CD or whatnot. Just choose something that you can cut up. Um, and yeah, uh, there's more things that could potentially go wrong with this one. So yeah, obviously uh, sharp knives. Be careful, guys. Don't stab yourself. Uh, make sure you're handling them with care. Um, Maybe talk to your parents or carers um, for a bit of help if you want. Um, be careful when you're chopping the CD as well, just in case bits fly off. Um, yeah, I, I would 
you know, maybe ask an adult for a bit of supervision with this one. Um, but yeah, it should be fun. Um, and yeah, uh, just just stay safe and uh, be sensible and yeah, it'll be good. All right, so the first thing we want to do, to get the stuff here, is you want to take your Pringles tube and uh, you need to be quite careful this bit. Um, yeah, so the metal bit on the bottom, what you want to do is you want to get your knife and you kind of just want to stab it until you uh, get through and you just want to cut like a, a slit in the bottom like that so can you see that you just want to uh, cut a slit in the bottom like that um, the next thing what you want to do is um, you want to get your CD, well actually no, get, get the lid of the Pringles tube first and I've got a bit of blue tack to make it easier. You want to stick that in the middle, get like a pair of scissors and just stab it so you've got a hole in the lid. Uh, like that. So you see that there guys, you've got the hole in the lid. Then you want to get your scissors and just be really careful, you don't want to be stabbing your fingers and whatnot. Um, and you just want to like cut a little rectangle, it's a bit fiddly, um, I don't know if you've got like maybe a craft knife or something, might be easier, um, don't know what you've got, um, this is quite fiddly, um, I might see if I've actually got a smaller pair of scissors, just stay there, okay I've got a smaller pair of scissors, this might be a bit easier. Um, yeah, so smaller scissors are better. Uh, so yeah, you want to cut like a rectangle in the top of your, your Pringles tube. And uh, so it don't have to be that neat. Um, yeah, this is basically like your eye hole. Um, perfect. So see got like a little hole there it's all right um and the next thing you want to do is you want to cut up your cd so that it you've got like a piece that can cover that hole you've just cut so uh um i'm just going to cut mine like this for now but you uh you want to get like the picture off it all right so to get the design off what you kind of want to do if you kind of want to get your knife, you just want to like score the top of that CD a bit. Be very careful where the paper is. And uh, then if you get your tape. A bit like this. Doesn't really work, but stick that on the top like that. Make sure it's stuck down really good and then um you should i don't think you should just be able to rip it off it sometimes i can see now i've kind of got pretty pretty clear there so i'm going to cut a piece out of there um sellotape just plain old sellotape works quite well actually and if you uh, don't rip it too fast either uh, it tends to come off. Also be careful, you can see I made a right mess of this bit here when I was scoring. I scored too deep and actually it's cut the plastic. So that's no good, but this bit's good. It doesn't have to be completely clear, just fairly clear. I mean, you can already see, look at that. You can see the uh, the the light, um, the different wavelengths being refracted differently there so it's already split, it's splitting into a spectrum on there you can see it quite well um little mini rainbow there um but yeah if you've got any like nail polish remover or white spirit at home and stuff that's quite good for getting the gunk off but anyway back to the uh back to the uh telescope that we're making well it's not really a telescope but you know what i mean um so yeah you basically just want to cut a bit of cd out like that 
and uh, then you uh, want to take the lid like that and you just want to stick it on the inside of the lid and then um, don't need to use the sellotape just to keep it down like that and then this goes back on the top and then you want to get some dark tape so duct tape or plastic tape and then uh, just tape over the top this is basically just to keep the extra light out but uh obviously leaving a uh leaving your people so to speak uh, clear of tape so like that pass the tape's a bit thinner than duct tape so you might need the layers um you could also just like get paper and uh put paper over the top and um, stick that down decorate it paint it whatever you want to do i don't know how much time you got well we're in lockdown so you probably got quite a lot of time but uh yeah so just do that um it's a bit fiddly um, and it's quite hard for me to show you right now how it works but trust me it's quite cool when it works so I'm sticking it down like that stick on quite well So, so you can see now it's got like one little hole like that um, that's it. and you should be able to see through you can see there's a slit the slit at the bottom maybe right so once you've got your that, that's pretty much it what you want to do now is uh, hopefully you've all got lights in your house uh, but basically what you want to do is basically just get the telescope and you want to peek through the peephole here and just get that uh, slit right at the light. You might have to like move it around a bit. Um, the brighter the light, the better. And then it should split into like, you can see the spectrum. So you can see perfect. You can see the blue, the green, the yellow and the red. As I said, it's quite hard to uh, show you. I might see if I can draw a little picture now. Um, Excuse the cup of tea. Um, so basically, what you're going to get, uh, this is quite a hard one to show you, but it works quite well in your own home, um, which is where you guys are doing it. Basically, what you get is you end up with, if that's your, the end of the telescope that you can see, you've got your little slit of light there. What you end up getting then is a uh, spectrum is coming out like this um i can't remember which way it is um i'm just going to say the blues are on the outside and the reds are on the inside but you get little spectrums coming out like this um so it looks something like that um yeah and it looks quite cool and basically what the reason you get something like that um when you stare at the white light is when the light comes through this little uh slit here it does something called diffracting, which is uh, basically where waves spread out. And uh, the amount a wave spreads out depends on its wavelength. So because all these different colours of light have a different wavelength, they all spread out a different amount. So uh, you get this nice spectrum um, coming um, and it's quite nice to see. Which is so there we've touched on another property of light. Last last experiment we looked at interference and how waves add together and cancel out this one this experiment relies more on diffraction which is the spreading out of waves and diffraction is really important because it means things like it affects communications so whether we can get radio signals in a valley whether we can get mobile phone signals from mobile phone mast. So this, this phenomena happens all over our natural world and we use it for things, especially communication is probably the big one. Um, and this happens for every single type of electromagnetic uh, wave. So here we've just looked at it uh, for light waves, uh, visible light. It also works for water waves, works for sound waves, 
radio waves i've said microwaves that's what our mobile phones use this is another key property of waves that we've looked at now that scientists use every day to help them understand what's going on in the world uh so yeah hopefully that that worked for you sorry i couldn't really show you what it was like but even though it doesn't work got a tin of pringles to eat so uh all's well and well i guess um and yeah um Cheers for listening, stay safe and uh, keep doing science.